Hi, and welcome to the Golden Age Report. First, we're going to look at the Russian progress on their winter offensive. Next, we'll look at the tug of war going on for India's Modi. Then we'll look into what mischief the man of the year in Ukraine has been getting into. And finally, we'll peek in at the news coming out of China. So we've been hearing for quite some time now that this massive invasion is coming from Zaporozhye region towards Crimea. Well, we saw some signs that looked like they were headed that way a couple of weeks ago. First, we had this long-range missile strike on Melitopol that hit a hotel. Ukraine claimed it killed 200 Wagner Group soldiers. Russia denied that it killed any soldiers. We've seen some moderate frequency of attacks on Tokmak. During the past month or so, Russia has been pounding the South region, targeting air defense and ammo depots and concentrations of, of Ukrainian forces. Zaporozhye and Dnipro have been hammered by barrages of frequent missile and drone strikes over the past month. Today, the information coming out of that front looks to suggest a major turning point in that region. What looked like was going to be a large-scale attack by Ukraine has suddenly turned into what appears to be a push by the Russians towards Zaporozhye. Today, Russia launched three airstrikes in the region. We are also hearing that they brought out their much-feared thermobaric missiles. Apparently, they used their heavy flamethrower to vaporize Ukrainian strongholds today. The biggest surprise of the day in this news I'm hearing about is this Patriot PMC. That's pretty clever as, as this is the best way to push back the colonial powers is with the energy of the Patriot movement. We don't know much about this new PMC other than it's supposedly the Kremlin's personal private army. We understand that this is not legal under Russian law. Putin's usually a stickler for the law, but I guess in this case he just couldn't resist. We're hearing that they are the ones leading the charge towards Zaporozhye. We'll have to wait to hear more about this, but this is a very interesting development. It looks like things have changed quickly here on the southern LPR front near Lehman as well. We had expected to report that things were difficult for the Russians in that area. Suddenly we're hearing it's the Russians pushing into the forest. That region has been occupied by Ukraine for quite some time. Russian units continue to attack the Ukrainian defensive positions in Solodar. During combat, several enemy strongholds were seized. It certainly looks like Solodar will be the next city to fall. It's probably best described as a surrounded town of rubble. Ukrainian units are suffering heavy losses and hardly hold the defensive lines here. In Bakhmut and in its outskirts, Wagner's PMC units continue to methodically destroy Ukrainian units' defenses. The Russian forces advance both in the eastern part of the city and on the flanks in Opitny and Bidorny. As a matter of fact, Russia has apparently taken over the entire main highway connecting to the south of Bakhmut. The Ukrainian command continues to pull together new forces near Bakhmut, hoping to exhaust the advancing Russian forces in the urban battles. The Russian military industrial complex continues to crank out new equipment. Today they launched three new navy vessels, a nuclear powered attack sub, a new minesweeper, and a nuclear corvette. Putin vows to increase the pace and the volume of construction of various ships and equip them with the most modern weapons. So Zelensky again tried to persuade Modi to join the dark side. Modi has chosen once again put his own people first. Meanwhile, Putin has sent a Happy New Year wish to Modi. He hailed the close ties between the two nations and he said there was good things to come as India prepares to chair the Shanghai Cooperation Organization and the G20. Are we going to see Modi join the next Putin war room meeting? Zelensky signed a media law already criticized in December by the Union of Journalists of Ukraine for threatening freedom of expression. They 
of course had to make a change to their constitution to allow this. On the battlefield, all that Zelensky could muster up today was yet another attack on the nuclear power plant. Looks like it might have really done something this time. We are hearing that the backup power source has been disconnected by the shelling. We'll have to wait to see to hear more on this as this was breaking information coming out of the Western Live UA map. This is no surprise though as we know every time things are going Russia's way, Zelensky's playbook is to power and shell the nuclear power plant. So out in China, we're hearing that they've appointed U.S. Ambassador Quinn Gang as their new foreign minister. He has earned the reputation as Wolf Warrior. So that's what the U.S. neo regime will have to deal with now. Meanwhile, Putin had a very friendly video conference with his new no limits ally out in china also on a different front we're hearing that china has decided not to participate in this whole covid reporting effort china has decided to open things up it sounds like they're not on board with this uh, this whole effort anymore so we're starting to pick up on this whole vibe of this new growing movement of patriots and those that want to protect the earth aligning together. I've also seen that space force is connected to this movement in some way. I'd like to first mention that the dark forces have put this poison pill out there to the patriot group that makes them somehow believe that they must be aligned with big oil. It suggests that somehow being against protecting the planet is somehow patriotic. This message is certainly from those that run these destructive industries and serve two clear purposes. One, it seeks to divide the masses and pit these two groups against each other. Two, it keeps support for their own power and special interests, enabling them to continue to profit off destruction of the planet. Keep in mind that this same group claims to be for the planet and is doing everything possible to create this carbon credit system. It's certainly a great system for them. They print off as much money as they need for themselves and can continue to pollute more than anyone. While this system punishes small groups and individuals for using the products that they create, it seems to me that Space Force will become the hammer that breaks up this matrix of lies and corruption. Thanks again for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe and pound that like button.